All right, everyone, here's the deal. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and install some Firid or Firod uh, made in Italy, uh, SD314 injector nozzles. Apparently, this is a step up from the Model 265 injector nozzles, which uh, this engine normally came with. Um, the engine itself runs really well, but, you know, every once in a while I get this little, uh, I don't know, kind of a lopy idle. I've been, I've been kind of running it down, trying to tweak this here and there. And, you know, I've made a lot of adjustments here and there. But I'm kind of hoping this will, uh, will cure the uh, problem once and for all. I suppose if this doesn't, um, then the, you know, the added benefit might be, since these are a little bit larger, we might get a little more low-end torque. Not really sure if that's going to pan out, but I tell you what, if nothing else, this will be a good experiment to see how the 314 nozzles perform in our old bone stock 300 SD. So let's get busy and let's start taking parts off of this engine. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild these things one at a time. All right, first up, let's go ahead and get these uh, diesel fuel return lines pulled off the engine. Now, if you recall, we uh, we changed these out a few uh, oh about a few months ago, so they're they're still in really good condition. So we shouldn't have to re replace them. All right, up next, we're going to remove the high pressure diesel fuel lines, and I've got a uh, an eleven sixteenths. Uh, flare nut wrench and that's what I'm going to use here because well it's sort of masquerading as a as a 17 millimeter but uh, I've already tried it and it works pretty well what what this really means though is I need some metric flare nut wrenches so let's move on shall we Now, where the flare nut wrench really comes into play is on the injector pump side of this, okay? Because the delivery valve outlets may or may not be all the same distance from one another. Because you know there's, a, there's, a, there's an adjustment there that can go this way or that way. Your uh, regular open end wrench may or may not be able to loosen uh, one, of the, uh, one of the compression fittings in the middle. That's where the flare nut wrench comes in. So this is my recommendation. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the rest of these. And the next thing you see will be me lifting the fuel lines off of the engine. All right, we're all loose and we're ready to come off of the engine. Let's get this uh, vacuum wire disconnected and out of the way. All right, there we go. Not too hard, really. All right, I'll tell you what I am gonna do. I'm gonna cover up my delivery valves with just a little tin foil, just as a precaution. I don't want any dust getting down in there. Now the tin foil is real easy because it, you know, it conforms to the shape of whatever you put it around, so it'll stay put. You don't have to worry about it. It's a lot better than a plastic bag or, you know, something else like that. Okay, let's go ahead and get the. Let's see, any, mini miny, mo, catch a foggy by his toe. Out oh, hell with it. Number three. Let's go for that one first. All right, you're gonna need a 27 millimeter deep socket. And uh, you'll probably want the 12 point because they have a lot more space inside. All right, so we're going to start in the middle. And uh, as opposed to removing all of this accelerator linkage, which is kind of a pain and I don't, really don't want to do it, uh, you've got to get this guy in here. So you're going to want to pull your accelerator cable back a little bit like that and kind of, kind of move it around a little bit and put our extension on. And we'll get our breaker bar on here. There we go. And that wasn't too bad at all, really. Now 
All right, I've uh, never done this to this engine, and uh, you and I are going to take a look at this together, okay? Come on, focus. Focus with me. All right. I don't know how dark or light or shiny the middle part is supposed to be, however. Anyway, so we're here to rebuild these nozzles. So let's take it over to the workbench and break it loose and pull the inside out. Here we are back at the bench vise. Got the fuel injector clamped down here pretty well. And let's go ahead and get the uh, bottom part off with our 27 millimeter. I'm gonna be careful with this. Don't wanna get too crazy. Man, let me tell you something. That thing was on there. Let's move back over to the other bench so we can examine this. All right, we're going to take a look inside one of these fuel injectors. And before you ask, no, I'm not going to do pop pressure testing. No, I'm not going to install new shims. I'm not going to verify pop pressures. I'm not going to do any of that mess. All I'm going to do is replace these nozzles. And we're going to see what happens. All right, let's see what we have here. So if you've never taken a look inside one of these guys, you've got a, a nice hefty little spring there. And on top of the spring, you have a spacer slash bushing and that spacer sits in the top part of the fuel injector right off the bat I'm seeing some I got some nastiness out of this one I, this is like the third one I've done and the other two the uh, I didn't get any nastiness out of they were pretty clean inside but if you can see right here, there's some brown stuff there. I'm not too sure what that is. Hopefully it's not rust. Well, anyway, let's take the nozzle out and see what we have. All right, so the, uh, the, spring, the spring pushes down on this little plunger, okay? And we'll continue our disassembly. The next thing out is, and I'm not going to pretend tonight that I know all the names of these parts. Okay, this end goes toward the nozzle itself. And that little plunger, this little guy here, sits down in there like that. Now we're going to drop the nozzle out here. Man, that's kind of nasty. It's kind of brownish. Right, kind of brown. It's an SD240 made in Germany. I'm guessing these are the original nozzles from 1984. And this is the, I think they call this the Pintle. Is that right? Anyway, it's got a very, very, very tiny little nib or little tip there. And there's actually a little hole. You can't see it on the film, but there's a, there's a hole that goes... Come on, there we go. It goes horizontally through it um, in that way, but we can't. It's too small to see on the camera here. So, All right, so this part, this is what we're replacing. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some brake cleaning and get these little parts cleaned up a little bit before I get ready to put the new nozzle in. So bear with me on that. That's kind of boring. So I'm going to do that off camera, and then we'll reassemble it. All right, here we go.
you don't want anything to touch the tip of this uh, pintle that goes into this nozzle. All right, that's looking something like that. And next up, this part here. And next we have our little plunger. I'm going to call it a plunger, although I have no idea what it's really called. So that has a beveled edge, right, on the bottom. The beveled edge goes down toward the nozzle. It sits right in the middle. And your spring sits on top of that. And then your little bushing sits on top of that. And then the top half of your injector slips down over all of that. Tighten it down by hand. And now I'm going to take it over to the workbench and I'm going to torque it down to somewhere between 70 and 80 Newton meters or around 55 foot pounds for you uh, North America folks. I'll be right back. All right, all done. We're going to get this thing back in the car. So the way you do this is you put it in your bench vise upside down and you clamp on these two flat marks. You clamp on these two flat marks here and here. Okay, clamp it down really well. Put your socket over the top of it. Be careful. Don't mess up the, the tip of this thing. Okay, and then you want to torque this half down to the appropriate torque setting. All right, this guy is ready to go back into the car. And then all we have to do is screw it into the engine and torque it down to the same torque setting, which is between 70 and 80 newton meters. All right, we've got to remember to take our old heat shield out of here. Let's see if we can get it out of here with this thing. There we go. Ah, not a problem. All right, so that's the nitty-gritty, dirty details down in there. Uh, I'm going to take a brass brush and run it down in there real quick, put a little compressed air in it, make sure it's cleaned out real well, and then we'll reinstall the new fuel injector, or the rebuilt uh, fuel injector. And we've got a little nastiness out of there. Now we're going to put our new heat shield in place. Remember, this recess right here goes upward towards the fuel injector. And that domed side goes down toward the engine. Okay. And when you put these two, you'll see, you'll see right away that the fuel injector fits nicely. Uh, the nozzle fits nicely down into this uh, recess. So really, the only thing to do is drop it down in there and then position it into place with one of these. Uh, if it, you know, if it ends up a little cattywampus. There we go. That's really easy. All right, let's tighten it up. Always start at a lower torque setting and then go up. That was 30. And that's 40. And that's 50. And that's 55. And a little extra. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off of the camera and then we'll start to get the engine back together and then we'll fire it up here in a little while. All right, I kind of went hog wild there and went ahead and decided to uh, finish this thing up. So I got my, uh, my fuel lines reinstalled there and I got my uh, fuel lines all tightened up. I believe I have everything back together and uh, we still need to uh, do a little priming here. All right, I'm going to keep that up until I get uh, get it primed to where I want it. I had one casualty. I broke off another one of these plastic uh, hard lines. This one goes to the uh, the EGR, which hey, it's no big deal. I just 
I just capped it off. I'm thinking about getting rid of the AGR anyway, so yeah, whatever. All right, let me uh, let me prime this thing up, and next thing you see is going to be a test start. I guess we'll have to crack open these uh, top lines and see if we can't bleed off some of this air. Okay, I just cracked open each one of those and I noticed a little of fuel coming out and I heard a so the uh, we got a little air bubble out so I'm going to give it another shot and see what happens here. All right, we got her fired back up. And I cracked each one of those again. And you heard each time I cracked one, it stumbled a little bit. So that meant that that cylinder was working. Uh, we're gonna let this thing warm up. And then we're gonna take it for a test run. All right, so the initial verdict after being on the road for just a few minutes is that the off idle torque is a little higher. It's it's kind of nice to be honest with you I mean it would it's a noticeable difference it really is now I haven't tested wide open throttle or anything like that but um, the, uh, the the amount of throttle that you have before the turbocharger kicks in is is much more effective it, I think it made the car more drivable to be honest with you I've noticed a little bit of a change in the idle quality I'm not saying it's either bad or good it's about the same I I think the tone of the engine might be a little different uh, maybe maybe it's just new part mentality I don't know but uh, we're gonna drive a little more and see what else we can find out all right we're just gonna try a simple pull away you know not full throttle just just enough to get us moving and move on down the road I'd say it's pretty nice. And let's let these cars pass by. And let's see, we're doing we're doing about 35. So we're gonna floor it. Down to third. And we're picking up nicely. Yeah, good power. Alright. Well, I'm going to call this a success, folks. The SD314 nozzles is a nice little upgrade for your OM617. So, hey, listen, I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And look forward to more cool videos for our W126-300SD.